Welcome to the Bronx Latino History Project. My name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is November 19th, 2021, and we're here again with Evaristo Roman for part five of his oral history. So you can go ahead and pick it up where we left off last time. We left, we left off in Woodburn when I came out of Woodburn. Or That's right. Exactly. No, like I was saying, um, I, the reason why, how I got to Woodburn, I don't remember if I told you that, um, because we were, I thought we were talking about therapeutic communities. Yeah, we were for part of that, um, of the last part, and then towards the end, um, we, we got to Woodburn. Um, yeah, yeah, because in between, there's a few therapeutic communities that I went to, because the timeline is like this. Um, I'm, I'm trying to put it together because within those few years, a lot happened in my life, you know. Sure. Um, and and one of them was like, you know, back then they, when the Rockefeller came around, um, I signed up for the Rockefeller program. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And, 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 and did I sign up? Yeah, I had to do Well, this, this is the way it was. Um, one day... I was in my room sleeping, and I went to get up, and I seen my sister try to give me a hint, and there were two detectives there, and they came and they got me, and they took me um, to Edgecombe, mm -hmm. right? And Edgecombe, they it was like a court within the the, the facility of Edgecombe. Okay. Right, and it was supposed to be a Rocker, a Rockefeller uh, facility, at least part of it. Um. And they 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 had me become a civil commitment. Yeah. Because they asked me if I wanted help with my substance use. I said yes. And they had me sign papers all all before you know it. I'm in the Rockefeller program. You know. And and um, what they did was my first. I seen a lot of people escaping. But I didn't escape because I actually wanted the help, you know? And and what happened was that they, they, I was still a teenager at that time. Remember I told you, they was locking me up when I was 16 years old at Rutgers Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which they should have never did that. Yeah. Right? I remember you They only had like two that. buildings. Or oh, I remember sometimes we used to go to the tombs. Yeah, sure. And that's down, you know? Yeah, yeah. On the ground. And um, and I was only 16. I was supposed to be dealt with as a youth, and I wasn't. You yeah. Know, I didn't know better. You know. Um, so they sent me to Manhattan State at that time, the first bit. So I remember I was in a, 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 a what is it, K-Bomb -bon, building, something like the May bomb building or something. Yeah. That was the main facility, right? And there is where, you know, um, it was like a, a hospital because that's in Manhattan State. Mm -hmm. in Manhattan State in the back, right? Um, so what happened there was that um, I got a, I, I was waiting for a visit because I'll tell you, my mother found me wherever I went to. Yeah. You know, uh, that's why I, I, I always felt safe around my mother, you know? And, and, I was very active. I was so I had so much energy. I always been like that as a child. Uh, um, so uh, they knew this guy used to call me Errol Flint because I used to put on a black bandana and used to play basketball and used to play everything. I had to be active. Yeah. You know, and on on um, I was on the yard one time and I seen some guys coming from the other building, uh, from the cleaner building where they do the pressing and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And one of my boys, Happy, was there, which he had two brothers that would get a brothers, Koki, okay. Chiki, and, and, and Koki. Koki sang very beautiful, man. He was a good brother, sang lovely. Before the equipment was there, yeah. he used to sing, and we just used to hear him sing while we'd be with our girls in every corner, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it used to go dark, and we'd be with our girls. You know how well, the way it was back then. So anyway, he said, why don't you come over here? And since I was already affiliated with the cleaners, because my sister worked in the cleaners, 
on 163rd Street, mm-hmm. right, Murphy's. Um, uh, and I knew he had an idea already, I had press clothes and all that. I said, let me I ask for a dress. Because the captain of security, uh, my mother went to visit me for the first time with her friend, Raquel. And it seemed like Raquel and the captain hit it off. Oh, that's right. I remember you yeah. mentioning that. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So... Before you know it, I got a carton of cigarettes and some candy and goodies and stuff yeah. like that. And they said, you want to get a visit? I was dating Dorothy. Okay? So now, Dorothy used to come see me. He would leave me for the last. Sure. Said, so, you know, you can give me more time while he'd be talking to a girl. Right? And that happened. It so happened that when I got to the Maybaum building, I was able to walk over to the building on my own with no security. Yeah. They had attendants. They didn't have correction officers or anything like that, sure. right? So we even snuck a TV in there, man, <laughs> because we knew so there was a Puerto Rican show called a Show de la Juventud, mm. and it was Polito Vega, and he used to, um, I think, the, out of New Jersey, you know? Okay, And yeah. they used to... Play it just like Soul Train, but in Spanish, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, but where was that Sasa? Yeah. And, and, and we, st- I don't know, because, you see, when you got to before nine months, you were able to go out and get a job. Oh, okay, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. So we were able in our visits to get money and everything like that. And what we used to do, it was a little TV, right? But we used to have to hang it. When they came on check, we used to do Make sure every every check somebody else had to hold it. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So you know when you put the hangers on the because it was you carry on on the top of the bed like that, hang it up real good so they couldn't see it when they went around on a visit. We put it right under the bed as long as they wanted to see the beds really nice and done. Yeah. You know. So it was funny, and then we um. We used to sneak the smoking mm. and wine and wine. Yeah. So what happened was we would have to do the dish pan, right? Yeah. With the machine, put all the dishes. And all he had, when the guys were coming back, they would drop it on the empty garbage can. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then they, before they come into the facility, right? The guys that were already working, we would give them the money to bring us back our stuff. And, and the smoke, the visitors sometimes you'll bring and just bury it somewhere and we, we would know where to go to look for it. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Oh, wow. Okay, no, I'm not getting that. But I have to let it, you know, let it leave me a visit, a number. That was my first uh, uh, voice then when I had my first flip, my phone. Okay, okay, yeah, That's yeah, That's where yeah. I went and I found it. Okay, so... Um, so we would do the dish pan and we would, when we empty the garbage can, somebody always had to distract the guard so we had time to <laughs> stash, you know, everything that we got. Yeah. And then we go upstairs and we drink <laughs> and we smoke, you know, because they allow us to come out to the yard because it was all grass, you know, and the water, you see it. And I would get angry because I would see Orchard Beach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, you know, I was like, wow, man. You know, at that time, Orchard Beach was still section like, four, three, two, one. Mm. And we would play Wink, and we would play all that stuff, you know. Um, I'll tell you about the riots in 1967. Okay, was, right? yeah, 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 yeah. That's how the beach became Puerto Rican, because... Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I because, yeah, it was that two guys, uh, some white guys got Caucasian guys, with no disrespect, Caucasian guy got nasty with some females. Sure, sure, sure. Some guys defended them, so the mother white guys came, mm. and the word got back to our sections, and everybody just headed that yeah. way. Let's let's do this. Yeah. And uh, we just started fighting, man. And um, I remember I had platform sandals on, you know, and. and um, and and I, I I remember I threw a rock, and it hit the floor, and it hit two cops on the horses. <laughs> and I remember one cop was was chasing me, and I was running through the sand with my sandals, 
And all I did was, I had to have my little army bag, and all I did was drop it because I ran through uh, a blanket of my female friends. Yeah. And I just dropped it there and kept running, and he couldn't catch me, and they held my stuff, you know? But it was such a ride, it looked helicopters, the wow. horses, and and I remember people saying they're throwing white guys off the bridge, you know, cause, <laughs> yeah. well, you know when you come from Palm Beach, well, you oh, walk sure. this, yeah. Uh, it was like hell, all hell broke loose, man. And the, the helicopter's low, and oh, that was so crazy, man. Wow. That was before I went to Puerto Rico. Yeah, 1967, huh? Yeah. Right. Wow. I oh, believe wow. that was the time, yeah, I went to PR. Um, somewhere, because I remember I had a breakup with my girl Carmen, at, and I think it was a dance August 7th in the Hunts Point Palace. Mm. And, uh, and um, yeah, and I had to try to break up. Uh, she's the mother of my youngest kid that I never, he never knew, because yeah. I never knew she was pregnant. Sure. You know, uh, she hooked up with my boy Joker. Okay. And he, when I came back from PR, he was always inviting me. Yo, yo, come to my house, come out picnic, and I couldn't. I would tell him yes, but I would never go because, you know, I'm gonna interrupt something that's already. You know, even if I don't say nothing, yeah. she's going to feel for me, yeah, you know? Yeah. And the kid's going to be attracted to me because that's my blood. Yeah. And I remember he looked like me because I was telling you when I went, I go around because we were supposed to be talking about something else, man. Oh, no, this is fine, though. This you is know? fine, yeah. I remember when I was going to church on 183rd Street, Love Gospel Semi, which is a church that started on, on John 316 in Prospect. Oh, The okay, English okay. apartment got to be to be and Pastor Jerry Kaufman, right, uh, from Longwood, mm -hmm. he he said we have to get our own church, and that's what he went for. He wanted the Lois Theater, but, so, but he wasn't able to. So he got, he got a church right next to a pawn theater. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. porno theater? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy, man. The porno theater here in the church, yeah, that's crazy. But, it, it you know, um, she would see me with the kids going to church, and she would cry. Yeah. But she never came to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So I remember my daughter saying, um, um, Pa, he said, Pa, why does that lady keep looking at us and crying? And I didn't want to say, look, that's the mother of your kid. Yeah, maybe, to my mind, is since she has a resemblance of their mother, Sonia. Yeah, yeah. You know, life skin, because she was a model. She was 19. Oh, okay. I was wow. like 12. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, I remember. Right? That. Yeah. 12 going on 13. Right? Because um, I was dancing at that time. Yeah. You know, already. We used to sneak into the club. That was fifth grade, sixth grade. Yeah. Was already in there. We used to practice dances with each other in the hallway and all that. So, anyway. Um, so, you know, uh, I know that the kid looks like me because her cousin Cheeky see me when I came back from PR and she threw that in the air. Okay, yeah, yeah. He looks like you. Yeah. You know? So I'm I'm think my 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 thinking is that since my, my kids are like blonde hair because my kids like me, I was a little blonde. Yeah. Before and light skin because of that Spaniard in us. Sure. Because my my their grandmother was Spanish, and my grandfather was from Spain. Okay, okay. So that's yeah, why. Yeah. And her mother and Sonia had the same color, complexity, light skin, real beautiful. Yeah. You know, and so with dark hair, and so did Carmen. Okay. Same okay. complexity, yeah. you know? And they were both nice and thin and beautiful. And, uh, you know, so I, I think that was it, you know. Well, look, my son has... Two, two brothers, and a brother and a sister there. Yeah. You know, and they probably, she was all emotional anyway. I think I should have went to her, but I think it was her step to come to me. Yeah. I didn't want to stir anything up, especially in church, my God. Yeah, yeah. You know, but anyway, getting back to that. When I went to Manhattan State, right, um, they allowed me to go to my sister's wedding. Mm. And... I, this might be where I can get a timeline. I want to ask my sister when she got married. Okay, yeah, That's yeah, good, yeah. Right? Um, so, 
I remember that when I was in there, they made me the first Afro. Oh, nice well, natural, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I remember the, you the guys, uh, they were the white, the vocation guys, they, I used to run the, the, the styling and the hair company. They used to say, man, you got a nice hair for a girl, and they're getting it natural. But when I came back here to my sister's wanting, you know, I came back to the block. Yeah. I didn't want to be the first one to be looking like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just took a haircut. When I got back, they were disappointed. But I went to my sister's wedding, and they already gave me a taste of the street. So what did I do? I escaped. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. I escaped. And 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 because I did that, you know, um, that's why I have to put things together, because um, I know that I ended up in Warburn. Because of that, um, I had gone somewhere else, and I came back. I think it was Richwood mm. and Yonkers somewhere. Okay. It, it looked like a moon base oh, for a little yeah. while. And then I had gone to Phoenix House in between that somewhere. Um, but but before that, I was a little bit in, in, in already in, um, in, uh, in Set Out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you talked about that. Yeah, but Set Out was the one the place that changed my life. Changed me completely because Absolutely. I didn't know how to reach third grade level. I didn't know I had no insight into the life. And said I told me I had an acquisition, which was that one of the times that I came out from Sena, yeah. I became a ghetto brother. That's when I walked right into the ghetto brothers, I think. And I already knew how to acquisition. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I called the Commonwealth for Puerto, uh, Puerto Rico. And I, I said, let me take a shot at this, yeah. and it worked. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. the equipment came into headquarters, Yeah, right? And and, um, and it came under my name. Man, yeah, yeah. that's another thing we could try to track down, you know? Um, but I doubt it, because that's just a, a delivery of equipment, you know? But in, in any event, you know, that's how I got the equipment in there. Um, Anyway, years later, because remember, three years, a Rockefeller is a three-year program. Mm. So I had to be somewhere. I know that after the Woodburn, after after Woodburn, that I got into Woodburn, I remember uh, it was because I was already on parole on 161st probation, not parole, probation, on 163rd Street, and I was doing okay. And, but I was selling my hash. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the little rock gums that used to come, I don't know if you, the, the little nugget gum, that mm. gold that used to come, and little bags. So I used to have a pink bag and a white bag, and I used to have my fives and tens. And I was, and I was okay there, you know? Um, and somebody, somebody came and dropped a dime on me. And so, and I was in the classes, and I was at doing everything good, you yeah. know. Um, and somehow, um, he I go to see him, and my son was going to be born at that time. Oof. Right? That's yeah. why he let me go. Yeah. He said, look, I know you have about a son to be born. Right? Yeah. So, I'm going to let you go. And once your son comes back, and I really, truly now think that if I would have went back, he would have just kept me yeah, on probation. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do that. And I remember on 160, 61st Street, right, when you used to hang on McKillian Projects, okay, in the parking lot, and they played basketball there because a lot of good players came out of there. Um, across the street from Monique's, and right there. And we were hanging out, and I was with Joe Asset, hanging out, right? Yeah. And um, on the, there's some cars come by, and, and I said, damn, strange one thing. Too many cop cars, man, something's gonna happen. I was telling Joe Asset, and we drinking and smoking and getting high in the parking lot. Yeah. Right? The fence. Well, the basketball court had a little hole in it. Well, you go into the courts, you know? And and so this guy named Winston, a black guy named Winston, came to us and said, look, there's some guy that's in the car behind the bush over there. You could, They could see you, you can't see them. Yeah, yeah. And it, it didn't phantom on me that it was my probation officer, you yeah. know? 
So at one point, he came out of the car and I seen him. And I said, Joe, that's for me. Yeah. You get away from me, that's for me. So I, I, I went through the hole and I started walking. And they they came out of nowhere in the body. They all came out. <laughs> I said, and I had a Code 45. Yeah. They slapped it on my hand. And he says, okay. I said, okay, you got me. He says, no, I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I was, I'm going on my way to Woodburn, right? And it says, uh, I read the horoscopes, and it said, you're going to take a short trip. And I was, I uh, said, I'm on my way to Woodburn, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, my God. And, 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 and when I got to Woodburn, there's another thing we can probably track down. A guy escaped from Woodburn. Okay. Oh, that's right. You mentioned that in the last... In the last one, that someone escaped from Yeah, the yeah and he was there, right? And escaped. Because yeah. that, 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 the only one that had escaped was in 150, uh, uh, 1959, I think it was, mm. from Woodburn. And he was the second one that escaped from there. Because huh. these walls were high. Let me see if I can... You know? Find something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, and I'm saying, you know, he's, I'm, here I am on my way... I got rid of my underwears because I had jocks on, right? Yeah. And I don't want to turn that it look like panties, you know? Uh, and I had platforms on. So the minute I was there getting ready, because I used to dress, you know, really good. And I remember that I was still kicking. Mm. So we went to the block to where, you know, you get ready and process and everything. Yeah. And I remember it was about 4 to 5 in the morning. I was still up, right? And the guy was asking for sheets, right? Wow. And everybody was giving him sheets, you know? Yeah. It looked like he was coming off. He already had his plan. Anyway, so I remember about 4 or 5 in the morning, the guy's going around, the cop, the correction officer, and he says, oh, shit. <laughs> and then that's when he ran back and locked all the doors good and opened that gate. Yeah. And uh, I remember when we went out supposedly to eat breakfast, uh, I seen everybody seen on the board that the guy wrong was a nice place, but I just couldn't stay here. That's right, that's and, uh, right. Yeah. And well, everything's a good day, it's not as good as tomorrow. He wrote a lot of shit with, with the matches and all that, you know. In any event, that's probably a timeline that we could track down. Yeah, okay? yeah. Okay? Um, I went... I was already in, in, in Puerto Rico, I was in Catholic school, I was an altar boy. Yeah, that's right, that's right. right. So, I was, um, uh, I knew that job was about also giving medals, I mean, the, uh, uh, like it was a rosary thing with the numbers of the sure. inmate yeah. going around. So, I, didn't, I was doing anything to get out of my cell, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I said, that's my first way out, yeah. you know? And um, so the job, uh, the uh, altar boy, you know, the, the altar boy job came, one of them came over, a spot was open. So they gave me the job. So, okay, now I'm going around giving out stuff. Yeah. So yeah. now I'm limited. Uh, okay. So on a Saturday out of nowhere, boom, the door swings open, and it was Officer Abbott, right? He was uh, in charge of the main place where they do all that tailoring, the processing for the uniforms, um, then for the kitchen, all in that area right there, right? Yeah. He used to call it swagging, <laughs> right? Because the people that worked in the farms, because they had inmates that worked in the farm. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. You know? And they would bring back fresh tomatoes, fresh mm. things that we make for our sandwiches, you know? So, my thing is, because I already had experience with the pressing and the tailoring and all that, yeah. I had a nice uniform. I had flaps on my shirt, on my pants, real nice fancy one. Because yeah. I learned that already in, in um, Man State. Sure. You know, how to sew and do all these things. And the guys were, that were ready to go out, they said, look, hook up my clothes before I go out. Bam, bang, you out. Yeah. I was also fighting for the tear man job because I knew he was leaving. That's right. So that's I was right. always coming out of my door. Let me let me do something, this and that. He said, get back in your cell, get back in your cell. And he would swing his baton at me. But he only would swing it here or here. Yeah. 
So I used to just watch which way he was going, and I would move <laughs> side to side. He would hit the floor, bang, bang. But I ended up, I ended up with the job. Yeah. So now I'm not in myself. Now I'm hanging out, listening to music. Cause we all had a little radio with antenna, you know. The cigarettes they gave me was just a view. Mm -hmm. give you a pass. I I would. Um, that's for gambling. Yeah, for sure. Because I was already getting, was able to buy the money that they sent me to buy commissary. Okay. Yeah. And to buy um, my 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 good brands from the guys that were coming out from the outside. Yeah. And plus what they used to give me, because every time they want to give somebody something, they would have to put a towel out. They couldn't yell. You had to put the towel and I would go to them, what could I help you with? Listen, take this to this person, take yeah. this to them. And then, okay, what's in it for me? I'll get my cigarettes, I'll get my... You know, I made it around. I took the shower. There were three-minute showers only. Oh, wow. Even if you're soaked up, it goes off. Yeah, yeah. You know, me, I could have taken the shower as long as I wanted. Oh, that's right, because you're a tear man, huh? <laughs> yeah, and I could watch TV when I want. Yeah. Right? So, on Saturdays, we had to take care of six guys out. I took care of those six guys. Took, and I made it equal to two whites, two blacks, two Spanish. Yeah, I didn't yeah, yeah. want to make it all Spanish or none of that. You know, because that was going to stir. That didn't look good anyway. But I said, okay, we finish on time. This is, we have to GI the whole tier back yeah, from everything. Yeah, yeah. You know? So we do, I said, we finish by 11 o'clock. We're going to watch Soul Train. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So the way we watch Soul Train. I was looking at the girls. You know how it is. Anyway, I always, always was, I also was in the highest classes. Sure. You know? So, the, I was about to take my equivalency there. And I remember I have learned this, and it has helped me through. The math teacher, the teacher there, he was a male. He said, listen, if you can read math, yeah. you can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Learn how to read it. Yeah. And you can do it, and you got this. Also, because of that, and my printing skills that I was already doing in the YMCA, which was uh, the, where my probation was at, the old sure. YMCA, and I was in the print in the printing downstairs, right? Um, they allowed me to go, because I was always studying printing there. Yeah. In fact, they used to call us Chico and the man, because it was this old white guy like, the, you know, that's right. The people on the man, yeah, and me yeah, and yeah. him and I got along like real good. Yeah. So they used to call us Chico on the man, <laughs> you know. And then, um, cause at first it was this uh, uh, African lady there, but she was always coming on me, man, talking over me. But she used to smoke and smoke. She's a breath of cigarettes. She used to be a lot. But she was like, oh, I'm real, like sexy on me. Yeah. I wasn't going there, you know. But anyway. Maybe because she wasn't that pretty, that helped. Yeah. You know? Um, but in any event, um, they took me to do in a stage, in a certain shop they had, in a building that you go to, like that, to the front, more or less. Yeah. And it was dealing with stationery of the prison and all that stuff, sure, you know, like sure. that. So somehow, you know, you have to go to see the board to see how long, when you're going to release date sure. going to be. And when I got to the board, you know, they had told me, um, they, they started talking, and then they said, go outside. I went outside for like five minutes, something like that. And they called me in, and they said, how would you like to go home the 28th? I said, oh, man, don't, you know, don't play with me. He said, okay. You go on the 28th, back, stamp. Yeah. I said, shit. <laughs> and the ignorance of my youth. Yeah. Was that they had a, the TV was locked up on a wooden wooden um, frame, and then you open it with a lock, and then you could see the TV. I used to hang twenty eight to go. I made I used to, I made little dates going okay. down. Oh yeah, yeah, To my yeah, last sure. date, and sure. I would clip them on the board. Yeah. Th that was so ignorant of me because the guys coming in, you know. I'm sure they weren't too uh, happy with that, <laughs> happy you know. With that. I didn't. I realized that now. I didn't realize it then. Yeah. But they seen the youth in me. They seen, you know. But I started to build my muscles. I started to. When I came out of there, I was 
pill, man. Yeah. And those little months, you know? Because you have to be because you're in a prison. This is no longer a bullshit facility. Yeah. You have the murders and whatever. I don't know if they have murders in there, but I can imagine. They had the robberies in one area. They had and they had us on this area, the people with drugs and all that okay, in another okay, area. Yeah. I was in B three three. B three three, okay, yeah. I was I was in the B section in the third floor in the third cell. Mm. And so happened that those are my favorite numbers. Uh, three six nine. Okay, okay, yeah. And in Australia and numerology and all that, that's where it goes, you know. You know, when you add them all together, and yeah. that's, and, they, and that's the purpose of uh, numerology, adding, finding out your name, and, and uh, well, that's a whole new thing, you know, that I, I, I liked and I got, I got into. Sure. Because that was the area of astrology, and I got into it. Oh, yeah, really yeah. deep. I learned how to make charts, I learned wow. how to read, I learned how to do everything. In fact, myself, at the bean pong balls, I made it look like the planets. Yeah. And I had a uh, cardboard, like drawn with a different sign. Yeah. And they allowed me to do that, design myself. You could decide and tell how you want. Yeah. You know, a lot of guys have pictures of new chicks. Yeah, yeah. I remember, this is embarrassing. One time we came from school, and you know the, the hormones of a young kid. And I always had newspapers, and I put newspapers down, and I started to masturbate. And the cop come down with the first, with the other, but uh, he going around to every cell. I forgot they do a check. Yeah. And he goes with the tear man. And he says, interesting newspaper there. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But he didn't give me no ticket. Yeah. He didn't give me no ticket. See, my ears got red, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he was cracking up. But I used to hang out with him on the desk, you know, because it was a desk here and all the cells there. Yeah. And the door there. And then you go. And the movies on Wednesdays were there right there. We uh, go see a movie. I seen a good movie there. I forgot which one it was, man. Uh, really nice movie. Man. But anyway, I came back down and I went to um, my, my lady that know it, I was surprised. She was right there with my baby. Yeah. Uh, watching TV, right there. First I drank a little wine, got high, and then I went to see her. She was right there when I, go, when I opened the door. She was in a rocking chair in front of the TV with my son right there. Yeah. You know, she was a good woman. You know, guys were after her, but my boy Joe Ashley said, he's not here. And if I disrespect her, they got to see me. And Joe was asking, was big. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, he was uh, a vinyl looking. Mm -hmm. He had cur uh, blonde curly hair, you know? And he used to dress uh, like black people. Sure. You know, but he used to ask, I call him Joe Ashton. And he used to like my sister, uh, my older sister, my, well, uh, under me, you know? Mafia. And uh, that's why he looked out for me, man. He said, look, I, nobody going to mess with him while yeah. he's gone. I'm here, you know? For sure. Plus, a sister. If you had one sister that was, used to fight with guys. <laughs> Rosa used to fight with guys, man. Whenever you meet, um, which I want to introduce you to, um, Augie. Oh, from yeah. the Young Lords? Yeah. He's going to tell you, I need to dress sharp as a razor blade. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I always carry myself with char uh, charismatic, you know? Sure. My ways, my silk shirts, and I always had to be neat, man. You know? Uh, those are, that's the way we dressed back then. It was all about going dancing, you know, get, getting girls, you know, dress, looking good. You know, not, they didn't have all this. The kids these days, I don't know where their mind is at. Yeah, we yeah, all need yeah. to socialize, and we will get involved in, in, in the community. Sure. You know? Um, anyway, that's one of the jails I went to. Um, I got, I continue to get bus, for bullshit buses. Yeah. You know, here and there, you know, a um, little bit of times here and there. But I did graduate... Um, uh, this is another timeline, right? Yeah. When I was about to graduate, I said, ah, 
I got called by the draft board. Mm, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay, um, and I already have been a ghetto brother. Yeah. You know, um, so um, I remember I was in great physical shape. Yeah. You know, um, because I left. Like I said, when I left to Puerto Rico, I had like maybe 32 medals and trophies all through sure, the years. Sure, sure, Since yeah. third grade, getting medals yeah. and everything, in every sport. Yeah. You know, um, and, and back then, the presidential medal. Yeah. You know, I used to get it in events, you know. Um, and, um, oh, I, got, I just lost myself for a minute. Um, yeah, um, I just lost myself for a minute. Let's see. Um, Set up. Yeah, I graduated, right. Yeah. And I went to the draft. I went to, and they give you one talking, and they call your name through the TV and through the radio. Yeah. And you're born, they call your name, the year of your birth, and you have to report to Varick Street. Oh, okay, okay. And there... Everybody that I ran into, a lot of my friends on the train. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, yeah. They were headed. It was Vietnam War. It yeah, was Vietnam going absolutely. On. You know, so what happened with me was, right, it wasn't the fact that I was into a, a, in a drug program. It was the fact that they kept me there. Yeah. And, and first they give you to a, a ticket to eat in, in a certain place. And you eat, right, and you keep doing your other classes and your other tests and another test and your hearing test where every say when you hear it, bear, 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 <laughs> both and you know, and and then you have the physical ones and I was I, I, everything I passed really good. Yeah. And I, I remember they all talking to me because at at the end they have the you know the, the army, the marines, the navy, and the air force, right? Sure. And they the ones that want you. Yeah. Right. Okay. So they could, they were all discussing about who won, who, where I best fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and um, they wanted me as a tunnel rat. Somebody mentioned that I don't know where that came from yeah. because I was small. Yeah, you know? I see, I see, yeah. And uh, uh, and because of my hearing, the Navy wanted me. And I don't know about the Air Force. I know, but I know they all talk. I can't remember exactly what it was all about. Yeah. Um, how much time we got up on that? Go ahead. Okay. So, what happened was that, again, I seen them, people when the uniforms marching out, I'm saying, what the? F-? And <laughs> everybody that came with me is gone. Wow, that's crazy. And I'm saying, oh shit! I'm, look, my feet are marching as I'm doing this. <laughs> you know, I say, oh shit! Am I leaving today? Yeah. You know, and, and, and it was that they were trying. They, they were trying to find out how they could take me. Yeah. But I was an only child. Yeah. And I wasn't an only child. Yeah. yeah That's where yeah. they blew it. That's where they blew it. Yeah. Because the day I came to, from Puerto Rico over here. Yeah. My father's son was born. Mm. You know, my mother, because while I was in Puerto Rico, my stepmother wasn't the right one. Yeah. She used to call me names. She used to say, your mother's a prostitute. I remember And I, remember, I said, no, my father, my mother never smoked. My mother never drank. Yeah. My father found you in a bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and she would chase me and I would get hit for nothing. You know, my father used to hit me for it. And then he told me what happened. I, I wasn't about to say nothing. I was already, I went there with a tattoo. Yeah. Right? And I remember I was just 12 years old. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And it was a tattoo that I didn't even finish. I tried to do it myself. This is Gus and some guys on Cold where we decided to put some pins together and try to. It's crazy <laughs> shit. And I used to hang out with the young Canadians up in, um, you had Rocket, you had Bouncer and the Rockets on Tiffany, right? And you had uh, the Vikings, right? And you had us, we were the Canadians. You had the young Canadians. Eagle had another skateboard team. Yeah. You know, and that's where all Willie Colon's band came from right uh, there. A lot of people. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. You know, but in any event, um, 
Uh, damn, I lost myself again because I got so many visions in my mind. Sure, sure. You know, I've done so much in my life. You know, that anyway, I you know I I I went I graduated. They didn't draft me because I don't even know what class that is. I should look it up. Yeah. That they gave me. Mean that I, that I couldn't be drafted because I was an only child. Yeah. Not health reasons, not drugs, not nothing, you know. Sure. And I remember I wanted to be a, a model city cop. They had model city cops back then, okay. and a gray uniform. Oh, okay, okay. And I wanted to be one, but they had a height requirement, mm. and I didn't match the height requirement. Five seven, I think okay. it was. Yeah. Man, I know I'm barely five five now, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, yeah, that was a bummer. But I don't know what kind of crazy cop I would have been. You know, but I, I was looking at the right side of things for a while, you know? Sure. And we did the movie right after that. I remember they did the movie. We were involved in the, We had a club on, on Rogers Place in, in, in Westchester. Okay. It belonged to Tom something. And, and there were, I think there were cops, you know? Yeah. And... Uh, they needed people, Tom Warren, Tom, Tom Warner Enterprises, something like that. Okay. They're the ones that did the cross and the switchblade. Ah. And, and I was involved in that movie. Yeah. I was involved in that movie. And, and so was my brother-in-law, Angel, and he fell down. And just, one time, they, they had a, a cemetery scene. Yeah. And they looking for him, and he fell in one of the burial things. <laughs> Yeah, and then again, we said, where's the angel? And so <laughs> we picked up. But in the, the last scene, I was in, and I was part of the scene too, because it was a mama and the Bishop Kings. Okay, right? yeah. And it was supposed to be with Eric Estrada when he was first starting. Yeah. Right? Uh, David Wilkinson was, playing by, was played by Pat Boone. Mm. Right? Yeah. And I remember they put me with the mama. I was in the church scene and all that. And, uh, yeah. A couple of scenes with the mama, and I was in the church scene, and that was in the Audubon or the last, but they did the church scene was in the Audubon ballroom next to 168 in Broadway. Sure. sure, yeah. Up that yeah, way, yeah. yeah. That was the church. That's when they came together, and Nicky Cruz. Yeah. Right? Came together, and he surrendered himself to God. Yeah. He made peace and all that stuff, you know? And I, I remember that part. You know, it's just, I remember a lot of things. It's a matter of me putting it all together. Absolutely. You know, in any event, I, I, when I looked at a brother, even though I graduated, right, um, we were called, it was a club called the 310 and a half, okay, that belonged to Tony, Tommy Cuevas, and, 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 Tony something. Mm. I forgot. They had a construction site and they used that and they, they made a nice scene. It was a prospect in Westchester. Yeah. And, um, that was a dancers club. Mm. Right? And it was like at first we used to have one turntable, two turntables and put one song after another, right? Yeah. This yeah. guy named Robert came with a mixer. And and we started mixing music. We were the first to mix music in the yeah. Bronx. Yeah. And we had, they had the Latin room upstairs and the rock room downstairs. Okay, sure, yeah. And the Latin room, and the Latin room had a nice little patio on the black with a, with a nice river and you oh, could wow. take the girls to chill. You know, and then the dance floor, right? You come to some doors like that and you come here and that. There was a narrow staircase up, you know? And then a lot of gang members started going in there. Yeah. You know, that's why a lot of gang people say they run that club. No, no, no. We ran that club. Yeah. And then the gang members took over, mm -hmm. and that's when he made his mistake. Yeah. Because uh, I remember Lori told me one story, and and um, I heard another story. So I heard he got robbed, and they killed him on the robbery. Mm -hmm. And some people told me it was because um, he started get, using gang members as security. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, but I don't know what happened there because it's just something that came to me and said, oh, you know, he passed away. Yeah. They killed him, robbed him, and they killed him. And that probably was fucked up. He was a nice guy. Mm. A really nice guy, man. You know? Um, anyway, from there, um, 
I started playing paddleball really good. Yeah. Started hanging out there. And then somehow I, 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 I relapsed, you know, years later. i got to put this timeline together because I, I, I know that I started using drugs. Everybody was using drugs. Sure. After the Ghetto Brothers. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people, you know. And, and, uh, I, you never know, I was a Rolling Stone. Even though my mother left the room there for me. Yeah. On touch, you never knew when I was going to come home. Sure. You know, you never knew when I was going to come home. Um, I know that. Um, I have to think this through because I know I went to, I got involved in my film program, I got involved to church, the same church that was right across the street from the three, ten and a half. Okay. The okay, dance yeah. club was here and the church was here. I see. Yeah. <laughs> it's like crazy, man. You know? And and, and uh, they used to come over to preach to us, but, yeah. you know, we need to listen, but no, no, nobody went across the street. We wanted to go dance, you know? Yeah. And the three time was so hot at night that sometimes you didn't have to go upstairs. But you heard the music, <laughs> the people would dance downstairs and hang out. That's you know, funny. And get yeah. hot. But you'd be able to get hot upstairs, you know, you used to do that. But I, I had the pool where I used to take girls, you know, um, upstairs to the DJ room, let them watch, but they could rob it, let me take any girl I want up there so she can, you know, I can make a few good and this and that. And of course, Richie would let us all take turns, you know. Yeah. He would come up, man, he would open the door. We were the boys. We were the guys from the block. We were the ones that were ran. The DJ was Richie, little Richie, and, and, and Robert was the other DJ downstairs. So, you know, um, I heard that after we left and we kept going to the other clubs. Yeah. Hunts Point Palace and all St. George and the, and the um, Corso and the Village Gate. Yeah. And, um, and Bonnie Guru and Casablanca and the Ipanema, and the Cheetah, and, and the uh, Colgate Gardens, and the Hippocampo, sure. and all these clubs were really popping because that was the Sasa revolution. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and, uh, and the word Sasa, a lot of people get confused with this. And Sasa is, um, you know the way you make a, a pot and you have the sauce and you have you throw all kind of ingredients in? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what salsa is. Sure. It's a, it's a combination of all different cultures of music, Latin Absolutely. music, mixed together. Absolutely. As a fusion in, 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 in this pot. Yeah. You know, which happens to be salsa. But it so happens the salsa is related more to Puerto Ricans than anything else. Sure. Because one of the, even though you have, you have cachao, you have Cuban, Great musicians, with the big bands, Cuban big bands, huh? absolutely. Because you know the Riviera of the Caribbean was Cuba. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, and everybody would come to dance there. They have great music, but then you have the Puerto Rican style music, and then you have the Dominican style music. Yeah. Uh, which Johnny Pacheco, which he recently died, when he died. Sure. You know with the flout and you know, because that was the Pachanga area, you know? Yeah. And I remember yeah. Joe Cuba, when I was in junior high school, 38, uh, that's on San Hans, between 156 and Westchester. Um, we used to hear um, bang, bang, you know? And, you know, um, uh, Joe Cuba used to have that song, bang, bang. Yeah, uh, yeah. I remember I, I seen uh, for the first time on 161st Street, I remember I seen Johnny Colon. Oh. And there was another club called uh, uh, the Tropicolo. Oh, it was on sure, Longwood. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was on Longwood. Yeah. Yeah. And it belonged to Carlos Ortiz. He was a mm. boxer, Puerto Rican boxer. And that was on Wednesdays. So we used to mop and clean and then stay in the bathroom yeah. until they opened up and then we used to dance. Yeah, yeah. We used to sneak into the back of the Hunts Point Pat. We used to get in somehow until Papa John realized we were sneaking in and he started giving us flyers. Yeah. And oh, I used to take the. I remember when Larry Hollow first played, right? While we were going up the elevator. I asked the guy, let me take your instruments upstairs. Yeah. He said, okay, grab them. 
you know, and I'm taking and it was and I was looking, it was Larry Hollow. Yeah. He had a cowboy hat, a earring and that big thing right there, like this. Yeah. You know? And that big mustache. And and and, and I was Larry Hollow for the wow. first time, you know? That's crazy. And I was saying, yeah. yeah. And we, I mean, Hush Point Palace on Sunday used to have thousands of people. Oh, there. sure, absolutely. You know, the best ticket in town, sometimes from Friday to Sunday. Yeah. All for 250 Wow. You know? In any event, I met this girl named Rosemary. That's why I'm, I get a little confused because Rosemary went to see me in Puerto Rico. Mm. He was. Old. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was me and I forgot who it was, Johnny and, and another guy. We we were on Southern Boulevard and we look up and there was these girls in the bank looking at us and they kind of recognized us. Yeah. And it was because from the Huntsman Palace. Yeah, yeah. So they came down, right? And we talked. And somehow we paired up. But I paired up with the biggest one and the oldest one. Yeah. Rosemary. Wow, okay. She, yeah. was, she had a body, huh? oh my God, but she wasn't all that pretty in the face. Mm. But I didn't care about that. You know, I was a nice person. And she had a big body, and I'm a body person. So, as small as I am, I'm a body person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we paired up, and, and, and her and I would go places, and we would go to the houses, we would in between the and people. People would be rapping to her while I'll go get high in the back for something and she'd be grabbing stuff for me. And they would say, oh, there comes my man. And when they see me coming, yeah. these guys, these men will get pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say, that's your man? <laughs> that kid is your man? <laughs> the way I carry myself, I guess, you know? Yeah. You know, and I, you know, I think that was had to be before um, I had to put it together in my mind because these are all things that happen sure. in my lifestyle, you know. Um, through it all, right, I would go up and down. I was doing real well. Yeah. Until um, I relapsed. And I, when I went to church, I remember, and this was, I think, in 1976, mm. where I was, and I went, I had given myself to that church. Yeah. Right? Um, and because the gangs now disappeared, and, and, well, a lot of them disappeared, but they wasn't in the neighborhood no more, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Well, like a big drug scene came in, you know? Yeah. And took over. And I was selling two dollar bags, you know? Yeah. I remember for the first time I bought two, two. I bought five two dollar bags, didn't know what the hell to do with it. Yeah. This guy Santana from Cobra says, I'm going to a body to get the two dollar bag. Yeah. Gonna bring me back five. I didn't know what the hell to do with it. Yeah. You know? In any event, um, this guy named Freddie came and told me, look, Freddie or Alfred, well, Alfred, I think, look, came and told me, came and told me, listen, come on, I'll show you how to do it. We went behind the steps and we had a mash, a little mash, a little thing. Yeah. And, we, and I, I, there was the stairs in Cobra and 156, like that house, it was a long stairs and we played stickball and everything there. Sure. And I stood up there and I sat down and I was, I got, I got up on later, like a couple of hours later, and I walk into my house, you know what I'm saying? And I run into my other friends on 156 feet. Yeah. And Forrest and Tintin, that's where from Charlie's area. Okay, sure, yeah. Right, because that was my main ground, but I used to explore everywhere, you know? Yeah. And, and, um, they, they were scaring me. Oh, you bird. Oh, your lips are red. Oh, you this Ooh. and that. And I was scared. I was scared shit. But nothing happened. Before you know it, they're all doing safe shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I used to hang out with the guys over here, and we used to roll up and everything, and they would give me some leftover twigs and all that shit with the... And I would come in, that would be enough for branches. So we, 
how cute that would get, huh? Yeah. That's how I got, I know that was before because that's how I got in trouble, man. That's how my mother sent me to Puerto Rico. Oh, okay, okay. Okay? I have all these flashes in my head that keep coming up, but now I could put time here, here. Because now my mother has sent me to Puerto Rico because she found bags of smoke. I see, I on see. On top yeah. of my classes. And I was dancing, that's what dancing, you know? So that means I was already doing drugs before yeah. I went to Puerto Rico, that's what we saw. Sure. So, because I remember when I got to Puerto Rico, I used to show people how to make works. Yeah, yeah. You know, they all want, and they had good shit in Puerto Rico. Oh, okay, oh okay, God, sure. Man. I said, what's this, what's this brown? What's this caked up? Because it's almost pure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, and sure. Island people don't play around. <laughs> you know? And that's, you know, that's easy over there. And the city people, everything, everything stepped on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So... You know, so um, I showed her how to make the works, and we just, like I said, my father, I don't know if I told you the story about me going to the youth house in Puerto Rico. You did, yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah, but that missed out that part about getting people high, you know, getting, showing them how to get high. Yeah, yeah. And I already knew how to dance Latin there. Sure. So when I got there, that was one of the reasons I met Nana. Oh, sure, sure, you know, yeah. I don't know if I tell you the story about us on Third Avenue walking back. You yeah. did, you okay, did, Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah so that, you know, so that's what happened. So there it goes. That's what I'm trying to put it together now, you know? So that was all before I got, I became a ghetto blood. Yeah. It was yeah. before I became a ghetto blood. Because I can't, I became a ghetto blood and I got back from Puerto Rico. Sure. You know, and that was on the eighth grade. Yeah. That was on the eighth grade. So, yeah. you know, um, and then I remember having to be, having been in set out too. Yeah. Before I became a ghetto brother because that's how I knew how to acquisition. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But I remember splitting from set out and going back to it. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, and that's when I graduated in set out, I think in 73, 74. Okay, I see, yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So, I know I came out, that's it, when the, I came out with the interview, it had to be there uh, between 71 72. It had to be, the interview had to be there. You mean, because I know in 73, I was already at, sure. out of the ghetto brother. And you were in Sada. I was, yeah, yeah. Back in Sada, yeah, I yeah. was already working as a counselor. Yeah, yeah. As a prevention unit counselor. Yeah. So, I mean, I had spent like at least a year in treatment. And... So it had to be pretty close to 70, 71 that group that came out. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, but remember, you have seasons. Back then, in four months, we did so much shit, you know? Yeah. So many things happened. Um, I remember the Gerard uh, he re he reviewed the Willow Brook thing and all that stuff. I'm, I'm trying to, now as I'm, I'm talking, I'm trying to put things together. But anyway, let's, con the thing, let's go down this way. I fell into, I played paddleboard and I became pretty good at it. Yeah. You know. Um, but between that, I was really lost in drugs. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't until I graduated from Sera, and I went into Sera and completed it. Which I was away from the Ghetto Brothers already. Yeah. And 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 that's when my life kept moving away because I was always away from my neighborhood. You know, I would go to I would get on the on the bus and go to Yankee Stadium to play paddle and come back. Yeah. You know, um, and then I would go and hang out with my my friends from 156. They moved to Nelson Avenue by mm. Tremont, and I was dating their sister. So, um, I would stay over there too while we used to go to work. And and, uh, and then I came and we were dancing, and I remember that's when I moved away from all that, the counseling thing and all that stuff, because now they know we were all smoking. And, and, yeah. and, but I was still neat, I was still composed, I was still doing my stuff. When I really went down here was many years later. Um, I still, like, so many years 
drug free until 1980 something. Mm. And I, I, I relapsed around Castle Hill. Oh, okay, okay. When I moved over there, I, 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 um, I was, I met some correction officers. Yeah. Uh, this girl, Yvette, I think. Yeah, Yvette. You'll find a little thing. You know, um, because I was teaching Padable. Yeah. In, in, in Story Avenue in the courts. Okay, okay, yeah. And she took the last, she was first, but then she took the last lesson. And she always wanted to give me a ride home, and I lived on Varick Street. I mean, on Virgil. Oh, Virgil Street. Right? Virgil and Castle Hill, like that. Yeah. You know, it's like a, a nursing home in the corner, and a bunch of private houses. Yeah. That was middle class. Sure. You know? And I remember I had been working in uh, in advertising because I went to printing trade school. Yeah. Right? And I graduated with 27 straight A's, and it was when on a newspaper strike. Oh, okay. Because I remember they called the school for somebody. Yeah. And I was sent to B. Altman. Okay, sure, yeah, yeah. B. Yeah. Altman on, what is it, 40, off of 43rd? Uh, 46 feet, around there. Yeah. All I know is when I used to get out on Fridays, that song, Thank God It's Friday, Friday, was on. Yeah. And I remember I'll come out of work. Ooh, man. <laughs> you know? But, like, that's when my daughter was also born. Yeah. Okay? So I can, I can remember that when my daughter was born. She was born five years later. She was born about, um, when I was 22, so I was 73, so my daughter was born around 70, I mean, uh, 82, 80, 1980. 1980, okay. Something like that. Yeah. No, no, it had to be 79, because it's five years from when my son was born, I think, yeah. Yeah, I gotta get that right, Mom. I'm gonna get myself in trouble. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, and, and, and I remember that her and I broke up, and then I, I ran into uh, um, another girl from the courts. Okay, yeah. You know, that I already had. So when I, 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 I got back with her, I still was playing my ball, and that's where I, had, I was with that other girl, Naomi, because I was, I had a girl named Missy, she was younger. Yeah. And here goes where things are, are going funny, I'm looking, I'm putting this together now. Because I had met Missy when I only had Jason, mm. and I was and I went to a program called on 112th Street and Commander Shea 111th Street, okay, across the street from where the young lords took the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and 112th Street. Right, was the other facility. It was really for an alcoholic house, but they also took um, drug out of it. Mm. And I made it through there like a breeze. Yeah. And that's where I met um, uh, Alice, uh, Missy. And it was a day for the blackout. I remember oh, okay. the year of the blackout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was the year of the blackout that I, I remember because. I, I um, was playing paddleball at, at 96th Street. Yeah. Right? And I was coming home, and as I'm going in the, in, in the facility, uh, in the visiting room right there, there was like, two girls with Dino, a guy named Dino, and, and he introduced me to them, and they kind of, he came up and said, yo, the girl likes you. Yeah. They're going to come for another visit. So we walk into his house, and I'm rapping to this girl, rapping to this girl, rapping to this girl. And she said, okay, Ernie, okay, because that's why they call me Ernie. Yeah. They're okay, Ernie. They're okay, why? Well, I'll be your girl. Yeah. Yeah. But why you make me work so hard? She said, I was, I was, I was going to say yes all the way back there, she told me. I said, so why you had me work so hard rapping to you? <laughs> you know? Yeah. She said, because I love the way you rap to me. <laughs> rap, you know what's rap oh, is when you're sure, trying. Sure. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Know so shit, man, and I didn't know 
because she had such a body on her. I didn't know her age. Mm. So one time Dino, we were in a group. Yeah. And Dino and I, we got into it. He said, oh, you just with a young 15-year-old girl that wants to get fucked. What? 15? Wow. Yeah. Shit. She didn't look 15 when I met her. Yeah. She yeah, looked like yeah, 20. Yeah. yeah. You know? And then I'm going to meet her parents, which these people made a big influence in my life. Yeah. Until the day that my brother-in-law died, because he, he, he was the one that I won the last um, tournament with in Paddleball. Oh, okay. okay. Sure, sure, he, sure. he died a couple of years back. Willie. You know, um... I'm going to visit their parents, right? Yeah. I'm here in my mind, I'm going to come in with a bunch of lies. <laughs> a bunch of lies. And I just tell them the truth. Yeah. I tell them, I'm in the program. I used to use drugs. I'm trying to better my life. Yeah. And these people told me, we don't care what you were. Yeah. We care what you are how you are now and how you're going to treat our daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that home unit was what I've been looking for sure. all my life. Yeah. You know, that unity, all the sisters, yeah, Yvette and uh, uh, um, Arlene, mm. and then uh, Ray, uh, Ray, and he died, he turned gay, he was gay, he died. And in fact, I was at Woody Crest visiting one of my, okay. I was at Woody Crest visiting one of my clients. Yeah. And I ran into them. Oh, wow. Yeah. But I had seen them in the beach. Yeah. Before that. You know? And uh, I'm walking in the beach like that to the main thing to go get something to eat in the stand. And I hear somebody say, Ernie. And I look. And there was them, <laughs> the mother and the aunt, her wow. sister, yeah. because they became my dance partners. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I'll tell you how it went with, uh, in a minute. Um, I have to put all this together, man, because I'm coming up with so many memories. Yeah. Trust absolutely. me, I've done so much in my life. Yeah, no, I know. Because the streets raised me. Yeah, You know. For sure. How I, how I survived. Yeah. How I, I know. survived down, you know? Because trust me, I haven't got to dark places yet. Yeah, no, I know. These are some of the good things. Yeah. You know? I still have to get... Are you recording? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I still have to get to the dark places in my life. These are good things that happened to me. You know? Um, I'm telling you this. So, they accepted me in that family unit, right? Yeah. And I would go to the beach and go everywhere, and I would eat, I remember her mother. Because when her mother would invite me to one of the dance with her, sister, with her daughters and that, yeah. I mean, they really accepted me. Yeah. Her father, Indio, and her, because they were from the barrio. Okay, sure, sure. So they already knew, you know. Yeah. Her, her, she was Norma, that was her name, Norma. And Missy, Alex, you know, was really, 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 really beautiful. Yeah. He was very athletic. Yeah. And we would take anything. She was playing. Uh, she, used to, she wanted to go. She wanted to have a military career. Mm. You know? And Somehow she got pregnant for me, and I tried. I said, "Listen, no, because you have a career. You want things. Yeah. A baby would. Yeah. You know. Definitely. And I didn't know she was that young. We already have sex because in that program on 112th Street, yeah. the guys on 115th Street, we had a little apartment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I and see. we would take girls. Yeah. We take turns. Like, Who got the keys? Who got the keys? I said, Look, I'm gonna need the keys. Right? Yeah. And I remember one time her and I having sex. Right? 
And uh, and she told me, Rennie, Rennie, there's some people cross the street looking at us. I said, oh, really? Okay, so let me go up and just close the shade. I came out with my shield. Yeah. <laughs> and then the guys left that one the fire skate, right? Yeah. But the girl stood. <laughs> I cracked up. But anyway, she was so mature for age. Yeah. You know? And oh, I remember when her father like wanted me to be the, in charge of them all the time. Sometimes they didn't want to listen to the things I said. Yeah. So I, I, I left them in the park one time. He, he came in, he scolded me, and he told me, leave my house and everything. And she wanted to leave with me. Yeah. Because they lived on the first floor, so I seen I went outside real hurt. And... You know, um, she was telling me, like, wait, I'm going with you. Yeah, yeah. And I was trying to say, no, no. So I went across the street and I talked to one of the friends in the park. Because that was on College Avenue right there in front of the schoolyard. Okay, Had sure. handball courts and everything. So I started to smoke a joint with the guy. Then he came and I went to throw it away. And he seen me. He said, don't worry, I used to do that. Yeah. And he apologized to me. And he sent for a six pack of beer, you know, and we drank it. And he said, look, it, you know, I love the way you, you treat my daughter. I love the way you treat her. Yeah. You know, you respect her, you treat her the way you treat her. And, and I remember I met a girl, Yvette, a teacher also. Yeah. There, she was from the Panama course also. She was very fine, man. Mm -hmm. She was graduating from Lehman. Okay, yeah. She used to work in Pope Park. She used to teach right there in that center across the street from Pope Park. Yeah. Right there. And we would play paddleball. I would write to her. And the way we, we, when I was playing paddleball and all that, we went to a trip up by uh, the cloisters. Yeah. Right? And the guy just said, let's not play paddleball today. Let's go out there and have a picnic. We did. But I was with her, and we stuck together. And she, you know, she seen that I knew how to dance. Yeah, yeah. So she stuck. So I, they called me Ernie because I used to hang out with this guy, like 6'5", named Ernie, and I'm short. Yeah. So every time they were looking for me in Yankee Stadium, they said, um, where's, you know, little, little Ernie, and that's what I stood with, you know? Yeah, yeah. And... Um... I uh, I started now dating her too. Sure. Because one time, one time, you know, she was doing, she had to do catch up on homework. Yeah. Right? She had some assignments. And I said, so what you said that you need to do, you know? I said, well, I need to do five papers. Yeah. And I said, well, I want to take two off your hands. Yeah. Remember, I wasn't in college or nothing. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I took two off her hands. She said one had to be where, because she was in communications. She said one had to be where you, um, uh, there's a scene, and it becomes a violent scene, mm. right? And in between that scene is like a makeup, yeah. and and then there's a, 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 a it's like a one area, a medium, and a patch up. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I related it to paddleball. Yeah. You know, and how we play it. Some people get hit and they argue and this one. They realize that it's a game and it's a sport. And they make up and they're still friends. Sure, you know? sure. And that's why I did. And I wrote on that and I got her. her name. I didn't know her name. And the other one was a Christmas. She had to create a Christmas book. Yeah. Right? And since I draw and I do calligraphy and all that, I did a nice little Christmas book. Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay? And I gave it to her so she turned it in. And one time I'm walking to see her, to see my house at the college avenue, but she lived on 167 and Grand um, Concourse. Yeah. Right in the corner building. And she says, what you, I called and she said, what are you doing? She said, uh, I'm walking up this way. She says, you got money on you? I says, yes. She says, uh, bring up a six-pack of Hannigan. I said, okay. And we go there, and then she tells me the news. about, yeah. it. And then she had gotten her G, G, 
GEO pre money or uh, college grant money or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So I said, I want to drink I want to celebrate. So these guys have been rapping to this girl for a year. She had nice long hair, two back hair. Yeah. Great body. You know, she needs to put a rep in that arm, you know? And she had, I she had awesome breasts, awesome everything. She was very athletic too. Played basketball. I remember her white shorts and red shirt. Awesome. Yeah. You know? And and um I was living at Rosedale. Yeah. Oh no, I was living in, in St. Lawrence. Okay. In Westchester. Okay. Right there in a private house that my mother, uh, one of her friends from beauty parlor gave me an apartment. Yeah. I mean a room. <clears throat> so anyway, she said, oh, I want to get some Coke. Yeah. You know, where we can get? I said, yes. Yeah. I said, we're split. 25 and 25, they were 50. So she said, oh, I want to go dancing now. She said, well, the only place I know is in Rosedale. And that was close to where I was at. Yeah. So we went dancing there and everything. We had our drinks and then she said, mm. She said, you live around here, right? I said, yeah. About your house. Yeah. God. And I remember the man when I first penetrated her, she said, Oh, the first thing that came out of her mouth, she said, Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. He got me. After rapping to her so much. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And she used to tell Ernest, she used to tell Ernie, but he has a a, a woman, because by this time I had ran back into the mother of my kids' life. Yeah. Sonia. I still had Alice. Yeah. Right? And then, but I was telling her the truth. Yeah. And, and so, big earnings you say, but do you like it? Do you yeah. like it? Yeah. You know? And yes, I like the way he raps to me. So he's just being honest with you. So either you're going to accept it or not. Yeah. You know? And I guess she accepted it. And then everybody was, um, everybody was, these guys were ripping their hair off, man. Yeah. When they find out she was with me. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Sure. It was like, you know, wow, man. You know, this guy, Ernie, and like my friend Pancho, that used to sell beers there. Yeah. Everybody, he says, wow, he called me a wolf. <laughs> said, and in Spanish, what a lobo, what a lobo. Because I always get the girls, even though I was very quiet. Yeah. I'm a guy that went to a party, I was very observant. Sure. You know? I was quiet, and I'm, I'm always been like that around people. I'm quiet, yeah. Because I need to see who's who. I need to see who dances. Yeah. I need to see who doesn't. I need to see, you know, stupid people. Who's with who? I, you know. So I'm not very. I only want to talk to you if you have something to offer me. Sure. Sure. You know, and that's just the type of personality I am. You couldn't even ask my wife now. Yeah. When we go on parties with her, she always quiet. Yeah. She yeah, would yeah. come to me, cater me. But when it was time, excuse me, I've been suffering. Oh, sure. When, it, when it's time for me to show up, I show up, I dance, yeah. I dress, I look good. I get mine. You know, I'm not a person to elaborate a lot. I'm yeah. a person of demonstration. Sure. Sagittarian, pure Sagittarian. You know, the, the the sign of the sage and the counselor. Yeah. You know, that's a Sagittarian, a sure. pure Sagittarian. You know, I look my my son, you know, good. My my sun sign, Sagittarian. My ascending sign, Sagittarian. Okay, yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. And my Evaristo is my number is one, and my family number is eight. Mm. Which is involved with people, religion, and all that. Number one is a leadership number, it's a, a sage number, it's a, a progressive number, it's a person that's very outdoors. Yeah. I'm a very outdoor guy. I yeah. love the outdoors, you know? And I did, I used to make love outdoors or everywhere I could, you know? Um, which reminds me of something else now that I miss. Jesus Christ. But I can tell you that later. I have to write down this because you know what? I'm really, really, I, I've done so much and they're just not together. And these are only the good things I'm telling you. Sure, when sure. I get to the bad part, you're going to see the times I died almost, the times that I suffered, how I suffered in life. Yeah. I suffered, man, in life. I used to take candies off the floor to eat. Sure. You know, sure. as an adult. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, we used to wait for, for 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 Kentucky Fried Chicken to finish, so when they empty out the chicken, we could eat it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know what I mean? Definitely. And, and we, oh man, well we get to the darker side. I'm just telling you, some of the good things that maybe we can put together because you know what? When you get clean, you put these things out of your mind. Yeah. These are things you just erased out of your mind. Yeah. Like the gang. Yeah. That only came to me because of torment. Sure, sure. I didn't have no idea because the last time I saw Yellow Benji, I gave him my number. He gave yeah. me his number. They just didn't pick up the number when I called. Yeah. You know? And there was a reason behind it. Yeah. I know now. Yeah. You know? Sure. Because, um, you know... I've done a lot of good in my life. I guess that's why I'm still alive. Yeah. And, you know, um, like I told you, I saved the first life when I was a kid. Yeah, that's right. You know? And um, I even sacrificed my own to save his. Sure. I didn't know how to swim that good. I learned how to swim when I came from Puerto Rico. Yeah. I learned to swim in Puerto Rico good. Yeah. You know? Um, even though I love the pools here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't go to the extent I did while I was in Puerto Rico, you know? Sure. Um, you, could, you could stop now. And, uh, and yeah, we'll pick, up, um, we'll pick up next time. Uh... This is what we need to do. Because I'm still...